Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and it is new game engine time. Yes, today in early access preview, Game Guru Max just launched on Steam. I don't know the pricing, I'm actually recording this in advance, but assuming this, I published this on Friday and everything went according to plan, you could pick this guy up in early access. Now this is the next generation of Game Builder, uh, one of the easiest to use 3D engines out there. Now you might find actually when working with Game Builder that there might be a little bit more jank than you might expect. This isn't um, trying to be the next Unreal Engine or Unity. This is more about making game development easy and accessible. And I have to say, for the most part, they pulled it off. So here you can see one of their sample levels in action. Right now, this game engine is very, very much written towards creating um, first-person shooter-style games. They have other modes in development, and the entire idea is out of the box, you don't need to do any coding. In fact, out of the box, half of the uh, tools are actually uh, turned off, well over half. So it's more of a kind of a drag-and-drop, use pre-configured settings sort of engine to start with. But you do have a lot more customizability behind the scenes. Also, weirdly enough, when you get close to water the camera really speeds up I have no idea what's going on there uh, this is running on a 2070 GPU uh, it's not the fastest engine I have ever seen but again it is early access I expect in time that that will definitely approve so let's take a look at what goes into creating a level and for the most part it's a matter of just dragging and dropping in entities into the scene so here you can see this is an audio zone when you walk into the audio zone it plays audio pretty straightforward on the whole so we got behavior it triggers a behavior of type sound in zone there are a number of different behaviors that you can define for a certain area and you never have to touch them although if you you want, you can drill down in behind and write your own behaviors in Lua. In order to do that, though, you do need to set up the uh, developer settings. This is not enabled by default and attach a script. So you can definitely go beyond just simple drag and drop. But on the topic of drag and drop, well, it works. So see over here, you've got a number of different assets out of the out of the box. So let's say we want to add a rustic raised silo. Boom, drag it in. Drop it. That is how you populate and create your world. Want to add a creature into the world? Boom. Drag and drop it. It's got automatic um, placement into the world, so world snapping tools and so on. On the topic of the world itself, we also have tools for uh, manipulating and working with the world. You see here you've got um, control zones for running the FPS side of things. So up here you see shooter game. You can set up um, quadrants and so on that are, are used. Uh, you can set up character details and so on. You see here, there's also a settings for puzzle game and RPG game. Those are going to be coming at some point in the future. You have control over global settings, such as if we want to have rain, we can turn rain on, snow, and so on. Uh, we also have control over the editor lighting, and we can change the camera settings. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, you do have uh, special effects work. So if we go, again, back to the camera, I did not mean to open my browser. Well, I'm actually going to the wrong spot anyways. You want to go to the world settings here. You're going to notice you have a number of different options available. So time of day, you can set it. So if you'd rather have it be evening, you change it to evening, dusk, and so on. Uh, at the same time, you can change the thickness of the clouds, the cloud coverage, the amount of clouds that you've got going on. And this is all really simple and straightforward stuff to work with. You also have some special effects here. You can set the background music to go ahead and play. Uh, we can apply filters. So if you want different effects, basically think of these like LUTs. Uh, so you can really change the way the graphics work. You've got control over post-processing graphic effects. So you can turn things like bloom, uh, anti-aliasing, tessellation, uh, exposure, settings for automatic. Uh, you can turn reflections on and off. You can change the amount of bloom. You can change the exposure rate and so on. You also have control over shadows, how they're generated at the time of the, where the sun is and so on. And you got a couple of uh, settings for handling artificial intelligence and characters. Uh, in terms of your world, as I started saying earlier on, you actually do have full world editing, uh, editing tools here. So you can see you've got sculpting tools for raising and lowering the train. So here we're in raised train mode. My brush is gigantic, so let's make that brush a lot smaller. All right, so you can see, and basically dragging and creating train is a matter of that. Uh, then you got a number of different tools here for, um, you can change out the blending modes, the ramping, random, and so on. Uh, we've got tools for uh, painting textures in the train. If you want to change things up, you can do so like so. Uh, you've got the ability to add trees and shrubs and other <laughs> things to the world. Uh, so paint you okay why are you not painting I may be doing user error also do keep in mind uh, this is 
Oh, spray trees, move trees, add tree. Okay, let's just add an individual tree. So you can add trees. So it seems like spraying trees isn't working right now. Uh, but as you can see, you can populate your world with plants very, very simply um, and other tools there. Now, do keep in mind, again, this is early access. So you're going to run into the occasional problem. There are also a couple of limitations on uh, how you um, can export your game, at least while it is in early access. And I'm going to show you now how you kind of string your game levels together. This is one of those areas where they took from Game Guru Mac, Game Guru Base, Basic and really kind of cleaned it up, made it more streamlined. So here, let's go select that thing we had. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Let's go back to object mode. So go here. There is our entity in the world. Um, we can set various different properties for it, positioning, how it aligns in the grid. Uh, we've got settings for uh, how physics will work in the world. Uh, we can apply behaviors to, um, well, not for a static object. Uh, you can manipulate the materials and set to it. And again, if you've got developer tools turned on, you've got a number of different options that you can set here. Uh, you can add a sound to it, explosion details, and so on. Also, you can pick the uh, Lua script if there is one uh, that is appropriate. Again, that functionality needs to be turned on. Uh, as well. And then finally, if you want to go ahead and test your level, uh, you can do so right here, jump into it. You can also test in invulnerable mode so that you can't, so you won't take damage uh, and such. Here you can see our game. I think I probably screwed our game up because I put this uh, barrier in place. So let's see if we can. Yeah, I don't know if that there's, I don't know if there's actual swimming in the place. So I think I'm going to just fall to my death and drown there. So if we wanted to get past that, I guess we'd have to go ahead and delete our wonderful object there. Uh, but you get an idea of what the engine is all about. It is super, super simple. You see here, you got a number of different uh, things like checkpoints, flags, trigger zones, wind zones, uh, text for showing the UI. You can play video or play audio based off proximity and so on. So it does have the majority of what you need to make a simple game right out of the box. And then you can turn on all of the developer tools and so on and get access to additional functionality if you want to move beyond that. So now you can actually beyond this level that you're working with, you're going to probably, oops, I did not mean to click that. You're going to probably want to connect those letters levels together in some way. And here is how it works now. They've created this new uh, storyboard system here. So you see a flow of it. Your game uh, starts here. Here is a pause screen. So if we go open up the pause screen in edit mode, like so, uh, what you'll notice here is there's a number of different menu options you can put in place. And each one uh, has uh, controls for the GUI for it and then the action to happen. So, um, if you do resume game, this will trigger off the resume game. This will go to another screen, which is defined as the control screen. And then that will bring you into the control settings where you can then set game settings uh, like here. So if you click medium, uh, it will set the property for medium and so on. So this is how you string together all of your scenes. And here you can see actually loading of a scene. So once the loading scene, loading screen is done in this particular case, uh, it will go on and actually load the level. That is, um, no, that's the image thing. But it'll go on and load the game level. The game level itself is available right here. And then if you want to go ahead and edit the level, you click the little edit link and you bring it in there. So if you had levels that transition to other levels, you could connect these different pins. So next level, um, game win, game loss. So if you had another level when this one finished, you could just drag this out and bring it to another um, level that you could just create this way. So I could add a new level in here like so. So when you go and finish this guy, it will now go into this level and we just go ahead and click this guy and now we're in the editor. So here is the default train editing tools. So you can um, start with sort of presets going on. So if we want to have a mountainous area, a canyon, a desert environment, planes. So let's start with the desert, for example. Um, you basically can generate the train and open up the level editor. So we started with uh, our default level, a desert level. All right, so now we've got that as our starting point for our um, our game level. Here is where your player starts at. You can start putting other things in. So obviously you could add like an, a win zone or an end zone. So if the player gets to here, they win the game. Very exciting. It's a really good game. And then of course you start uh, loading in your game objects here. Uh, there are a ton of objects built into this. So there's 1,246 game objects to find. Um, so if we want to bring in this barrel, let's bring in a barrel. So now we start populating barrels into our world, and place it accordingly. Of course, you do have control over uh, the barrel itself. So we could do things like scale it, make a very giant barrel. So we'll call this level, get around the giant barrel. And that is kind of the basics of creating a game. Now, if you want to get into actually having characters in your game, oh, by the way, also we have those environmental effects we saw earlier on. So you can change the way that the level looks. This is kind of, again, vying for the easiest 3D game engine out there. I can go ahead. I can test my level right now. So like so, 
and then what I need to do, oh, please don't have physics or you're going to crush me to death. All right, there we go. And I think my exit zone is somewhere around there. So I just won my game. Very good game. A mass, amazing game that we just created there. But you get an idea of what the work is like, at least just to get something up and going. And if you're new to game development, you can do so much more in something like this than you would do in Unreal, Unity, or Godot in a short period of time. Now, you're going to run into li limitations a lot faster, too. Now, let's say, again, I think I started talking about this. You want to go ahead and create a character. There's also that built in here. So we got a character creator. So here we have uh, low rent Ryan Reynolds. Uh, you can basically come on in here, name him. So this was a character I was making of type Bob Dole. Uh, you can change between adult male and adult female. Now, I don't know why when you change to female, you <laughs> oh, or you've got zombies out of the box. You can also bring in your own uh, 3D models, by the way. So it does have importer support. And then you got the ability to customize characters, uh, sort of like you would have from you know, a, a traditional video game kind of maker. Uh, so you can make uh, characters this way. You have setups for animations for them. So for example, we're showing the idle animation right now. So if we want to do, um, here we'll do hit upper. So there is our character getting hit. Don't like the speed of that. We've got control over that there. So we can speed up like so. Uh, so you've got a, a number of different animations predefined. You can create your own animation set. You can clear or load in the animations, bring them in. On top of that, you can set up default weapons for a character to have. Uh, you can have it so that you can take the weapon, the amount of ammo that this character has, and then you can save your character out and use it in your game. So you have these character editors for making and populating your game world. Uh, you had a decent amount of stuff out of the box. I don't know the amount of work involved in actually uh, bringing in your own custom textures and heads and, and uh clothing and so on to the engine. Uh, but I do believe that you can extend that or you're going to be able to extend that. So there is this character creator built in here as well. Now, another really cool thing about Game Guru Max is, let's get out of here. So this is, again, the storyboard. This is what you use to tie all of your games and game levels together. But if we go back to the very beginning, there's actually a ton of content that comes up. So when you first load things up, this is what you are uh, met with. So we were looking so far at Jungle Fever, uh, but there's a number of demo games kind of walks you through um, or that showcase different features. You can come in and just play the thing or you can uh, edit it out of the box. You can also create your own new game uh, from here. And then you've got various different properties for the, your new game. So here we'll show another example. See, so if you hover over it, you get um, kind of a preview of the, what the game is like. And go ahead, you edit the game, and it brings you back to the storyboard. Now, I told you earlier on, there are some limitations well in early access. Well, one of those things is publishing your game. So you got the ability right here to export your game out, and you can save it as a standalone game. This is involved in making the executable for your game. Uh, it is PC only uh, in terms of the export, but what you'll notice here is you can't sell your games while they're in early access. Um, but other than that, that is what is involved in making your game. It will be saved to whatever directory your, your app directory is. And you can save it, and then it's going to go ahead and build your game. Now, this is going to take, yeah, it's not a, not a terrible amount of time. But as you may notice, this is a very uh, Microsoft-style progress bar. So it's not the smoothest. Oh, there we go. Yeah, very Microsoft-style uh, progress bar. But that will go ahead and generate the executable for your game. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Game Guru Max Early Access. If you are interested in learning more, you can head on over to their website, Game Guru Max. The actual address is game-guru.com. Uh, learn a little bit more about the engine. Basically, we covered everything you're going to want to know. If you want to go ahead and pre-purchase this one, it is available. I don't know if this is going to change literally tomorrow when it is released. Um, but right now, there's a... 15% discount. So you're looking at $42.49. I'm assuming that's USD. So it looks like it's regularly $50. Bucks. Uh, in the future, there is going to be uh, XR VR headset support, mixed, mixed reality, and so on. Uh, that is quite cool. They do... Um, they generally will finish it up. Their target specs are a GeForce 960. Uh, we'll see how that ends up being. Um, but yeah, it's also available up on Steam or, or should be. Again, this will look different tomorrow. Uh, there is no pricing shown on Steam for early access software, uh, but I'm assuming it's going to be similar to their actual website. Um, so it is launching today when I publish this video in, theor video in theory. So on uh, March the 25th, it should be up for pre-purchase. Just do be aware if you pick it up early, uh, you can share your games with friends and so on. You just can't sell them yet. And you are basically banking on them, um, you know, adding the features and functionality you want. But right now, it it's 
it's pretty solid. It's pretty mature in terms of what it does. There's a ton of content in there. Again, you don't pick this up if you want to create the next AAA title, but if you want to have a very beginner-friendly 3D game experience, especially right now, it's very optimized towards shooter-style games, it's hard to beat this. It still has the crown of one of the easiest 3D game engines out there. Of course, to be easy, you make some trade-offs. But I'm interested. What do you think of this in general? Um, does Did you try Game Guru in the past? Do you like Game Guru Max more? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.